Everybody wants about the same thing when it comes to real estate, when it comes down to it. We want an easy transaction and we want to go in and make sure that we get everything that we want from the transaction. And we also want to make sure that it costs us as little as possible. But there are certain types of people just with their personality types that are more likely to not get what they want. And unfortunately, a lot of this is avoidable. And so today I'm gonna to make a video talking about the top four types of people who are more likely to get the short end of the stick in a real estate transaction when a lot of it is kind of avoidable and it's gonna involve, involve a lot of self-awareness on your part in order to identify if you fall into one of these categories. I think everyone does on one level or another, but really just observing yourself and kind of being self-aware can really help you in a real estate transaction and that's what we're going to be doing today before we get started though do make sure you give this video a like subscribe if you haven't done so already and let's go and jump into today's video talking about the top four people who are very likely to get the short end of the stick in a real estate transaction now the first person that i see or first personality type that i see that is likely to not get exactly what they're wanting in a transaction is the over analyzer now I am gonna caveat this a little bit and say you always wanna make sure you understand everything in a transaction. You wanna make sure you are thorough. You understand everything that's getting sent to you. I'm not saying just go out there and be really blase about everything and just sign any old thing that's put in front of you. That's, that's not what we're saying. Make sure you do your due diligence because that is your responsibility to make sure that you are comfortable with everything that's getting put in front of you and that you fully understand and appreciate everything that's going on. So I'm not saying just caution to the wind, go for anything. But what I am saying, there's a certain type of person where, and I've seen this from time to time, this type of person just becomes really fixated on all the stuff that might happen. And then, you know, a lot of fear starts welling to the surface. When we start talking about this, there's a lot of concern about, okay, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? I've been in scenarios before where somebody was really, 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 like, I'm not talking about just mildly concerned. I'm talking about losing sleep over thinking about scenarios where it would take like two or three very unlikely sequence of events in order to get to that point. So this type of person has a tendency to really just talk themselves out of out of anything and to really see the worst in every situation. And unfortunately, what usually ends up happening here is if anything good happens, it's usually something that they really question and they really don't trust. Uh, for example, I actually got fired one time for getting somebody under contract too quickly. Okay, this person started overanalyzing everything that uh, they got us to that point. So we got them under contract after about three or four months of, of looking, by the way, and got them under contract. And then this individual said, well, you know, that was too easy and I'm just going to walk away now. And yeah, ended up losing that transaction. And, you know, it's too bad. That was a great house and, you know, would have served this individual very well. But that's just kind of an example of how an overanalyzer sometimes can really just muddy the waters and start, start imagining too many scenarios in which things might go wrong. And you need to have a healthy balance of that. Again, I'm not saying just caution the wind, but there's a certain point where you're stepping over the boundary and you're kind of worried about a lot of scenarios that not particularly likely are going to happen. And when you start doing that, you start to see the negative and everything instead of seeing the opportunities and the potential that's out there. So. That's number one, overanalyzer. The second kind of person that I see that can sometimes get the short end of the stick in a real estate transaction is gonna be the appeaser. Now, the appeaser is somebody who really doesn't want any conflict, who's kind of afraid of pushing back in negotiations. And don't get me wrong, this person usually will make my job easier in a real estate transaction because, oh, well, you know, let's not do this, let's not do that, let's not, okay, let's just give them everything that they want and just, just be done with it. And that's perfectly fine. You know, in some scenarios, that is perfectly fine. But there comes a certain point where if you've identified the other side, they're not, like it's one thing if you've got two very accommodating people on either side. Okay, that's great because everybody feels like they're giving and taking and it, it works out, okay? Where the appeaser runs into trouble is if you have a complete bully on the other side of the transaction. Like if I'm working with a seller, the buyer is a complete bully, then 
I'm gonna throw a red flag really quickly and say, hey, I really appreciate everything you're doing here, but I don't feel like this is serving your best interest very well. They're just being greedy at this point. And, you know, let's uh, hypothetically, like we need to punch them in the jaw here to get them to back off a little bit because they're they're being too aggressive. So that's, that's what I'm talking about. So appeasers, they're very accommodating people, very nice to be around. Occasionally my job is just to talk to them and say, hey, um, I love what you're doing here. These people don't really appreciate it. And my impression is that they are just trying to take us for a ride here and they're being greedy and we need to push back, okay? That's really where I kind of step in and help with that particular personality type. Let's go and take a break real quick here. Um, if you're finding videos like this really useful, do know that I also have a seller guide for those of you who are considering getting your house on the market in the next within the next couple of years and there's a lot of tips and tricks and things you can do to get yourself ready to go and um, maximize what you can get for your home if that guide would be of value to you do make sure you reach out to me on my website link for that is in the description section down below and you can go ahead and just register and just make sure you put seller guide in the little comment section so i know what to send you now let's go and finish today's video the third type of person that I see that can kind of get the short end of the stick in a real estate transaction, and this is a little counterintuitive, but stick with me, and that is the person who is too confident. Okay, the person who has done too many transactions and they're just convinced they've seen it all, they've done it all, and there's nothing new that they can learn. This can really come back to bite you. And this, I mean, I'm really talking to a lot of real estate agents as I say this, because if you're a real estate agent in one state and you're going to another state, there's a false sense of confidence, let me tell you, that you know everything that can possibly happen. And once you start getting into that mindset, you start putting up the blinders and you start interpreting everything through exactly the lens that you want it to be seen as. So the best thing I can say, yeah, the best antidote for this is just make sure, hey, I just try to get yourself back into the mindset of the first time that you, you bought real estate, okay? Just Remove the fear, obviously, and all the anxiety that can go along with that, but put yourself back into that same mindset and get yourself ready to essentially go back for your first time because you're going to be way more likely to be giving everything the due diligence and the attention that it needs as you're moving forward. So probably the best example I can think about this one, I sat down with a um, uh, with a couple. They're looking at their finally purchased their, uh, their dream home that they're going to be retiring in. These people have bought and sold millions of dollars worth of real estate over the course of their lives. And they told me multiple times, hey, we're going to be approaching this as though this is our first time and we've never bought anything before. You know, we don't want to make any mistakes. So, wow, that is powerful way to approach a real estate transaction because you're removing all the fear, but you're also not getting too confident and just being very blase and making a bunch of mistakes that are going to cost you later. So yes, being too confident can definitely be an Achilles heel. Now the fourth type of person that I see getting the short end of the stick in a real estate transaction, at least where I am at currently, is the people who expects the entire process and system to conform to what it is that they want to see. So maybe they're used to buying real estate in another state, or you know, maybe something doesn't quite work for their schedule, or maybe they don't understand something. That's perfectly fine. We can explain that. But we start running into an issue where it just becomes the expectation of, okay, the entire system needs to completely adapt and shift and morph into what I want it to be in order to move forward, because that's how it's done somewhere else. This type of person usually accomplishes really just kind of making the entire transaction really clunky and really kind of a start, stop, and unnecessarily adding a lot of friction to it. It's kind of like getting like a, a crankshaft in a Honda Civic and trying to take that same thing and put it over in like a BMW or, you know, pick your, your model of car. So maybe a good mechanic could technically make it work. It's not going to run as smoothly as it can. So when you get up here to Alaska, just understand our way of doing things is going to be a little bit different. If I'm buying property in somewhere like Texas or Florida, I'm going to understand, hey, things are going to be different from what I'm used to. And I need to just adapt to that and I'm not going to be going in expecting everyone to, to adapt to the system and model that I am accustomed to. Just, you know, when in Rome, do what they do in Rome. So I sure hope this video has been useful for you. If it has, make sure you give this video a like. If you have any other personality types that are, you know, you've observed that are likely to kind of get the short end of the stick in a, a real estate transaction, do make sure you leave those down below. And, um, you know, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.